This is the new Ginetta G56 GTA, Ginetta's newest weapon in their quest to try and turn absolutely everyone in the world into a racing driver. We've been back and forth for the last couple of months trying to arrange a day where I could come and test it at their Blyton racetrack, but for some reason it just wasn't happening. So when Miller's Oils called and said, hey, do you want to come and review it whilst you race it? I said, absolutely. So here we are at Donington Park for round two of the brand new Ginetta GT Academy race series. Now, if you're familiar with the G55 model, you'd be forgiven for thinking this looks exactly the same because, well, it does. A drastic look revamp was not on the forefront of Ginetta's priorities. Modularity was. And I'd argue it still looks pretty cool with almost a bit of a Dodge Viper vibe about it. You join me in the cockpit of the G56 GTA. On our way to the grid for race one, I am snugly attached to a Corbel bucket seat, which itself is attached to a space frame chassis developed by a fiberglass bodywork. I am looking at a Motec LCD dash, and in my hands, I have a bespoke Ginetta steering wheel with paddle shift. All my controls are uh, within reach too on this center panel here. Things like your wipers, etc., which I, I don't think we'll be using today. This car is based on its GT4 older brother, the winningest GT4 car in the history of British GT. It's here this weekend as well. One of the most successful race cars in the world. But whereas the GT4 would set you back around 120K, the GTA comes in at a more modest 65K or so. So for nearly half the price, you get more than half the performance, more than half the power, and more than half the noise. You don't quite get that straight cut whining of the Hewland sequential in the GT4, but this six speed quaff, well, quiet it ain't. It takes the V6 that the Ford Mustang rejected and uses it to become a 270 brake horsepower, 300 pound foot of torque, tracked a supercar embarrasser at worst, and a serious racer at best, which I guess is what we're about to find out. It's a pretty damn light car at uh, 1100 kilos, which is about as heavy as a new road going MX-5. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that I'm not frantically weaving from side to side to warm the tires up. I'll have to tell you why a bit later because now comes my favorite part of being a guest driver. I get to do my first practice start at the race start. Great. Starting from 10th on the grid, I asked a bunch of people what they thought the best procedure for this was, and everyone gave me different answers. So I'm just gonna go with whatever feels best. Five seconds. Go and go. Not bad, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was about to say, not bad. Woo, frantic already. I think I'm gonna stick to the outside. Way, Jesus. Nearly wiped my front end off. What the hell? <laughs> oh no, oh sh Oh, for no. That is not what we wanted. Come on. Jeez. The, uh, that. Right, fine. Doesn't matter. Let's go. Let's let's try. Let's try. Let's try and get them back. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. This is my, my teammate, Ed. Sorry, Ed. You're a nice guy, but. Lucky for me. Further ahead, someone was trying to buy me some time to gather myself up after those first few corners. Unlucky for me, it seems no one told my buddy Ed about it. Oh, safety car board. Safety car board. Oh, what the shit? What the f***? Oh, what was that? Oh, my steering. No. Just back. Come on, Sopra. <laughs> First impressions, well, I give the impression my steering's f***. <laughs> my guess would be a bent steering arm, but uh, something, but either way, definitely feels like it's pulling to the left a fair bit. Uh, that was not the best start, that's for sure. Sometimes you're on the outside into the first corner and 
other cars get a bit jumbled up. Occasionally you could just sail past everyone on the outside. Uh, that is definitely not what happened there. <laughs> Uh, it, was a, it was a gamble and it, it did not pay off that time. But it's important to keep you cool, you know, when, when you have a start like that, you got to think, there's a reason you qualified in front of these cars. You have the pace and, and you can regain those places back. So focus is key. The main thing is to just not lose focus. You gotta just concentrate. The race starts now and, you know, we'll go after them. See what we can do. That, that was obviously... <laughs> Part advice to you, part psyching myself up. Uh, let's see what we can do from here with the with the wonky steering wheel. A bad restart meant I was behind Ed and another car yet again. Oh no, it's just, just I'm not sure this is going to work out. But I was still determined to somehow salvage this race. Oh, a bit of pressure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, stay there. Stay there. Do not come across. This one's... That's it. Oh. There we go. The culprit. This one's mine. Oh, you're the culprit, Ed. You started all this. At least my brakes work. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that was the ideal first race, but it could have gone worse, I suppose. First race done. Uh, can hardly look at the camera, there's so much sweat in my eyes. Uh, go podium third place in class apparently. I did not know where I was placing. Um, there was about five or six cars in front of me. And when I pulled in, someone gave me a hat and a trophy and some champagne. So not a bad first day. We're back tomorrow for race two, bright and early. So try and replicate that or even better. All in all, not a bad uh, first day at work. Here we go. Day two, race two, looking to improve on yesterday's result, obviously. Already we're kind of not off to a great start, if I'm honest, because the guys were at it yesterday working hard to, to fix this steering issue. I, I think they may have fixed it a bit too well, because if I'm honest, it now feels like it's leaning right a bit. I hope I'm just being paranoid at this point. Either way, we'll have to work with it. Let's see if I can fluke another start, like yesterday. I'm diving for the inside at the first chance this time. <laughs> I mean, I say that, but you, you just never know with race starts. Whatever feels right. Here we go. Lights on. Let's go. Not bad, I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that. And I, uh, I'm not falling for that one again, so I'll be tucking myself in right here. So these rookies are awfully rapid in this series, as proven by the fact that two of our three current podium runners are rookie drivers as well. That's for the rookie class lead then, the car's second and third uh, overall as they head down into the old heaven for the first time. There is the uh, number 60 car, that's George Collado making his debut in the series. Got himself on the podium in the rookie class yesterday, just about fending off uh, the 27 of Roy Alderslade. Whilst I did indeed manage to fend off the attacks from behind, that meant I then lost touch with the guys in front, meaning it was a very lonely race for me and my now eastbound steering wheel. So I'll spare you the bulk of race two, and we pick the action back up on the last couple of laps. I can still see you. Oh, 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 these tyres, man! Oh, since the beginning of the race, gone! Since lap two, lap three, gone! This car just hates any kind of input through the corners. You brake, you turn, hit your minimum apex speed, wait, 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 and then you have to get on the power. If you drag the brakes in, or get on the power a bit too early, the back end will just try and overtake you. So frustrating, I mean, the problem is you can't be too mad because that is what a big GT car does, kind of. So, 
Ah, it, you know, it's doing its job of <laughs> preparing you for that, but boy, it's frustrating in a situation like this. Come on, just slingshot out of this one. Oh, he's got to have some sort of problem here. He's not put up much of a fight there. Oh, hello. Oh, dropping like flies. Just got to make sure I'm not one of them. Ah, shame to get in those two places like that. Of course, I'd uh, much rather have battled it out with those two guys, but at the end of the day, that's racing. You take what you can get. Ah, oh, knackered. Race two, done. I'm not going to lie, I'm sweating buckets. That one was a lot harder than yesterday's race. Even though it's earlier in the day, it's a lot hotter than it was. And for me, the tires seem to start going off literally from lap two or three. I've still managed to finish P3 in class, which is great. P5 overall, which is two better than yesterday. Although if I'm being honest with myself, I probably wouldn't have finished in fifth uh, if the two guys in front of me hadn't fallen off. But it was a race of attrition today. It was just who could keep it on the black stuff. Towards the last five minutes especially, it was impossible to keep the car facing the right way. But again, two podiums out of two. I'm not too unhappy with that. We've got another race this afternoon. Let's try and make it three out of three. Come with me, I just want to show you something quickly. It's definitely going to sound like a racing driver's excuse, but it's not. I just want to show you something behind the scenes. The main reason why everyone's getting so squirrely, especially towards the end of the races, is because we're all running on these Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, and they are just road tires. There are no slicks, not even cut slicks in this championship. Everyone, both classes, gets a road tire. It's a very good road tire, but it's not a racing tire. And it may sound a bit odd to have a racing series with road tires, but when you think about the kind of driver that this championship is trying to appeal to, there might be someone who's just starting out and they're still working on their car control. And at that point, having slicks really wouldn't do you any favors, to be honest. So having something that would gradually break away, just move underneath you to help you work on that car control is a lot better. And obviously there's the cost factor as well. I mean, a set of these would be a fraction of a set of slicks. Janetta reckoned that you could do a whole season on one set. I don't know about that. I mean, I, I, even with if the wear is not too bad, I reckon just the heat cycles going through them, you might need a new set sort of halfway through, especially if you're doing a lot of testing. But they are indeed a fraction of the cost of, of having a lot of slicks. And speaking of being cost effective, if you come with me this way, just watch, watch yourself over there. We spoke about the engine, this 3.7 litre V6 Cyclone engine from Ford. Think about it, how often do you go flat out in your road car? 99.9% .9 of people have never touched full throttle in their road car for obvious reasons, but in a race car, you spend 70 to 90% of the time at full power. Now, if you're racing at a higher level, bigger budget, where you can afford to rebuild your engine at every other race, which is common, you can also afford to run a thinner engine oil. It doesn't matter if the engine goes bang, you get another one. In something like this, you want to prolong the, the, the life of the engine as much as possible. So what Ginetta have done is they've paired up with Miller's Oils to devise a specific engine oil for all their categories, for this specific engine, for this specific category. And when you pair that to the fact that this Ford engine is already a pretty reliable one, unless you have a bit of a shunt I think you're good for the whole season, to be honest. Round number six of the Ginetta GT Academy coming to you here from the Doddington Park Grand Prix circuit. The third of three races this weekend for Ginetta's newest championship. And they continue to provide plenty of thrills and spills for the uh, crowd here at Donington. Let's go! Last race. Two great starts under my belt. I have no excuse. See if we can make it three. Uh, good enough, good enough. <laughs> Where's he going? Uh, oh. I thought about uh, I thought about it for a bit. It's all good. We're still in it. Oh, um, trainer curves in this thing is insane. Uh, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry if I go a bit quiet in this one. <laughs> Oh, good move, Angus! That's Angus in the green car, he's one of my teammates. <coughs> Come on! The slipstream does not seem to make much of a difference in these cars. At least not around here. Get away. Don't let them get away. Pierce leads, then tries second, then right side, and then up the inside goes Yates for third place again. That was a really, really robust move, but he makes it work, and it looks like George Glado might follow him through. He's up the inside of white side two. They come across the start finish line, then side by side for fourth position. Good morning, yes! <laughs> He's bloody good he is. There was no way he was going to let me have that, but worth a go. Well then, into third, white side fourth, fifth Colado, sixth Darren Young, seventh Ravi Ramyed, uh, who's got ahead of Lee Goldsmith on the opening lap. Oh, hey, at least my steering wheel's straight. <laughs> Come on! Oh no, no! That pitting, oh, to Aaron Leung, with the inside almost of George Glado there for uh, fifth position. Uh, this, is what, this is what I don't want! This is what we don't want! The moment we have to start defending! Ah, uh, come on! It's incredible, the difference it makes! It, it's gone! Oh, Angus is gone! George Clado and Darren Leung now scrapping over fifth position. Leung trying to get up the inside through Hollywood, uh, but not able to do so. They've really dropped away from the top four though, haven't they, at this stage of the race? Oh, using the curbs as well, that was pretty lively stuff. Being caught by Ravi Ramyed as well. Ah. See the time that it's losing them. This is such a momentum circuit, Donington Park, so as soon as you start defending, you really do lose a lot of lap time. Nope! Not today! George Clado then, fifth position, but already being shown a black and white warning flag, we assume, for track limits. But he's now having to really drive defensively. Lung to the outside, Ramyed looking to the inside of Lung. That was a mistake from Darren oh. Reed. That is what we call what my I could really do with these two getting off my back. A oh, penalty for what? For what? Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, I always was the kid that would get bullied and then fight back and get in trouble with the teacher. I'm not doing anything. What am I doing that anyone else isn't doing? Yes, yes, George, tragic life story there, but what was that you said earlier about focusing 100%? Wait, oh, that's a brave lunge up the inside from Ramyed. What a move at the old hairpin. George Glada was a very circumspect on the brakes there. Circumspect indeed, Mr. Commentator, but don't worry, this was not my first rodeo. Come on. Oh! Come on, come on, come on! Right, buddy, this is it!
Yes! George Glado, the white number five car. He's actually back ahead of Ramyed, so it's just as well, really, because he needs to try and build a five-second gap now over the cars behind him, which he might be able to do if Darren Leung starts harassing... Oh, I tried. I drove with all the might of someone who believes he was unfairly awarded a five-second penalty. However, it just wasn't quite enough. I've totally lost count of the laps. Oh, please don't be the last lap. Ah, no, oh, never mind. Oh. Give my mechanic a shaka there. <laughs> it's been an absolute legend this weekend. Oh, oh mega dude, mega, mega. <laughs> oh, I'm off, but that was, but that was awesome. So, a dramatic sixth round of the Geneta GT Academy then, at the end of another really entertaining weekend of racing for the brand new Geneta GT Academy. So in the third race, as you can see, no trophies, no hats. Uh, I actually finished fourth overall, and I believe P2 uh, in class. I wasn't doing anything different to what everyone else is doing, but for some reason I got a five second penalty, which put me way, way behind. Uh, but what a race, man, what a race. That was, don't be fooled by the term academy. Like, you're gonna see guys coming from karting, but there's also people coming from championships above, like Ginetta Super Cup, who are sort of stepping down because of, I don't know, financial reasons, maybe that's one thing that Ginetta's doing right, is that obviously not only do they have the, the, the motorsport ladder covered with this championship, they're bringing new talent up, but they're also putting a safety net under people who've already got there and for some reason whether sponsorship you know vanishing or whatever reason the pandemic whatever reason gives them a safety net so you know the tumble back down is not so not so bad we always talk about how difficult it is to get up there in terms of finding sponsorship but when you're up there and you find yourself without the budget it can also be quite disheartening so this is here and uh, yeah well honestly what a weekend I'm going to ignore the five second penalty I'm going to take that uh, I think that was my best race amazing scraps with a couple of the guys uh, yeah, couldn't be happier. Just at this very same weekend of our recording at Donington, all three BTCC races produced three different race winners, all three of them Ginetta graduates. In W Series, Alice Powell, Ginetta graduate, won in Austria to take the lead of the championship ahead of the current champion, Jamie Chadwick, Ginetta graduate. In Formula 1, Lando Norris, one of the most promising up-and-coming young drivers on the grid, was oh so very close to pulling a major upset and nearly snatching pole position from one of the front teams. He went on to drive a superb race and score himself a podium. And yes, you guessed it, Ginetta graduate. You see what I'm getting at here? Yes, Ginetta manufacture cars. In fact, this very model will soon have a road version under the guise of G56 GTR. But that's obviously for another video. Really what they're in the business of is manufacturing racing drivers. Until very recently, you could start in a Ginetta Junior Championship all the way through GT4, GT3, LMP3, LMP1. You could literally go from a relatively regional championship all the way to Le Mans without sitting your backside in anything other than a Ginetta. Obviously with the hypercar rules having changed, that's in the back burner at the moment, but Ginetta are not ruling out a comeback with their own hypercar. Now look, I love supercars as much as the next person, but if you're lucky enough to be able to afford a supercar, if you can afford to take your supercar on track days, you can afford this. You'd be doing yourself a massive disservice if you never gave racing a go. And something like the Ginetta GT Academy could be the right way to go about it. If you enjoyed this video and want to help us get to 1 million subscribers by the end of this year, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much indeed.